Adobe, the undisputed leader in the software industry, has always shown dominance, not just in its product but in its stock price too. But recently, Adobe's stock took a hit, dropping almost 12% last month and 15% year-to-date, largely due to slowing revenue growth, increased competition from companies like Canva, and the rise of AI in the market. In today's video, we are going to uncover the true intrinsic value of Adobe stock using the DCF model. Let's find out if it's a great buying opportunity after a recent dip or should you stay cautious. Let's get into it. To find out Adobe's intrinsic value, we need to look at its latest financial report. Adobe recently released its Q3 result which we, we, we can use along with the latest 10K report. We can download it from the company's website. I already have downloaded this for you. And um, let's start to put company's name in the company name section and select the date for today. So. And country of incorporation is United States. And its industry is software system and application the next section is year since last 10k there are like four options in drop down menu we have to choose one of them in, in adobe case and uh, this is like q3 result and um, as you can see there's nine month nine month tender then we will choose 0 0.75 here and after that we have to go to go to trailing 12 month screen where we will compute all that data from last trailing 12 month the first section here is revenue here we need the last annual revenue first nine month of last year and first nine month of current year first we will find out last annual revenue which is here in 10k 18,284 let's put it here and in 10k we can see oh my mistake uh, for last annual report it's 19,409 so total revenue 19,409 and first nine months of last year is 14,361. And for current year, nine months is 15,899. So we got trailing 12 month revenue. And next one is technology and content. Uh, it's like research and development. First, we have to put like last annual data and then then the current quarterly data after doing that we got a trailing 12 month our research and development our next one is operating income first last annual operating income which was around 6650 First nine months of last year was 4,907. And for this year, it was 4,784. Uh, but there is one expense here which, which which is like unusual we can't see in a, any other months there it is the acquisition cost let's find out why they pay like acquisition cost as you can see they pay around 1 billion dollar termination fees to Figma okay
the problem here is like they paid like 1 billion dollar which reduced their operating income but this is not like you know every year expense so we will add these up add this back in in our operating income so that we can get the true picture of a company next one is interest expense interest expense for last year was under 13 million the first nine months of last year was 85 and first nine month of current year 119 now we have to calculate effective tax rate for last annual report actually we don't need like the last annual data for the effective tax rate we need a current data so we can calculate it by dividing provision of income tax with income before income tax so effective tax rate is 21.51% for a recent year which we need to need need in our valuation we just need a current data for effective tax rate that's why we are just calculating the current the, the other two things we don't need it that's why we are just putting a random number there Now you can see we have computed all these information and it's already mentioned here. The next section is we have to compute book value of equity. This we can find out in 10Q. In 10Q balance sheet. At last you can see total stockholders equity for current year and the last year. For current year it is 14,545. And for last year is 16,518. Then we have to calculate book value of debt. Which is current liability debt. Plus operating lease liability in current liability we have to add up all the debt which is interest bearing whether it's current liability or long term debt add all all them up We are adding up operating lease liability because these are contractual commitments and we treated them as a long term debt. By adding all, all them up we got most recent 12 month book value of debt. Same way we have to find out the last year book value of debt which is short term debt short term operating liabilities plus long term debt plus long term operating lease liabilities after adding all of them we will get last year's book value of debt The next uh, section is R&D expense. If we have to capitalize in our case, yes, we have to capitalize those. Amortization year, we are selecting three years. 
for software industry we always select three years and then we have to find out current year R&D expense which we computed in trailing 12 month you can see here it is 38 34 In year 1 R&D expense we can find out in 10k It is 34.73 for year 1 And for year 2 it is 29.87 And year 3 it is 25.40 After that we got the value Over here you can see the ad adjustment to operating income is around 8 three four million which we will add back in the operating income we already have counted operating lease li liabilities in our long term debt so we are leaving it as it is after that we have to find out cash and marketable securities in balance sheet for most recent 12 month we have to add up cash and cash equivalent and short term investment same way we have to find out for the last year Seventy one forty one plus seven zero one. Next section is cross holding or non operating asset in Adobe case. We don't have any cross holdings, so we will put zero here. I don't see anything regarding cross holding so I'm putting zero here. Same with minority interest. There is nothing mentioned about it in the balance sheet. So again we are putting zero here. For number of shares outstanding we can find out in latest 10Q. On first page, you can see it has 440 million shares outstanding. As it is September 20th, so this is the latest data. Otherwise, we what we can do is we can go to Yahoo Finance to get the latest information about shares outstanding. But this is 440 million shares are current data so I am putting those one but you can see here as well on Yahoo Finance in their income statement you can see this is not a current data they have updated in 31st of 8th month but we have latest data in our 10Q so we will use that information for current stock price you can also refer to Yahoo Finance it's currently trading at And marginal tax rate is 25% and now you can see the revenue growth computer numbers the revenue growth is around 11% right now and pre-tax operating margin for companies 39 to 40% sales to capital ratio is very weak for the company for current year but for return on invested capital is really good it's around 32 percent now we will go back 
and fill out all other informations here. As you can see, this is all the last 10 year data where we can see its revenue growth. From last two years, like revenue growth has declined a lot. If it was 22% in 2021, but after that it went down to 11% and 10%. And operating margins, you can also see it's very stable and operating income is increasing every year but like revenue growth is declining due to war in Russia and Ukraine for companies revenue growth I am putting the same revenue growth for next year which is 11 percent and for Operating margins, I am keeping it around 38% in next 5 years due to um, more competition from their competitors and sales to capital ratio, I am giving them 1.5% due to their dominance in the market. Next one, we need to find out 10 year treasury yield for the US which is 3.96%. And initial cost of capital we will select from here from drop down menu industrial standard which is 9.58 for other assumptions we are just changing a couple of assumptions here the first one is in a stable growth I will assume that your firm will have a cost of capital similar to the typical mature company but I want to override this assumption and I, I see like cost of capital will decline a little bit the another assumption is the return on capital uh, I assume that in after 10 years it will be around 20% so I am putting there 20% the next we have to change the reinvestment like reinvestment translate into growth in next year so I will put yes here and and uh, I'm putting lag of one year all other information I'm keeping the same let's just try to see if we miss anything here otherwise we are good to go to compute the valuation everything looks good to me here Yeah, we put everything here now click on calculate value and we got the value of 363 dollar per share which is really expensive as compared to current market price of 507 dollar after declining 15 percent a year adobe is still very expensive company as compared to its current market price so it's definitely not a buy right now it's expensive and uh, by clicking on detail valuation you can see all the valuation detail in this section where we compute everything the terminal value present value of terminal value value of our operating assets minus debt plus cash which we got value of equity and which we divide with the number of shares and we got our estimated value per share is 363 dollars 